Hello everybody, welcome to a new video of James Pizza. Uh, today I'm going to show you uh, how I'm going to build up my subframe with the rear wheel hubs that I uh, rebuilt in the last video. Uh, so I'm going to talk about a little bit more about my control arms and why I'm going to use this setup. Uh, so at first, uh, if you're new to the channel, have a look in the playlist. This subframe is going to be for my V8 turbo build for the S124, that's a station wagon version from a W124. Um, I did the same kind of modification on my 190 V12, that's also a playlist from, that I built uh, the last three years. So this is the first step in this process. So uh, if you're new to the channel, don't forget to subscribe in the right corner of you with my logo. You can also look on my website, jamespeacher.com, that's somewhere down below here, the link. And don't forget to put a thumbs up for the video if you like it. If you have any questions, don't hesitate to ask. So, uh, W124 subframe, it's an original subframe. The only modification that I did so far is I put a different uh, mount in here for the differential that will be in a, in a different video I'll show you later on because I'm using a W210 differential. Uh, the difference over here, I don't know if you can see it, but this differential housing is also used in older models when the backplate was different. Those backplates is from RM29, they will fit in the original W124 subframe, but the backplates, you cannot buy them new from Mercedes anymore. So that's why I modified it with an extra bushing so I can just mount the W210 uh, differential. It's a big differential, 210 millimeters. So that's the most famous big differential. Uh, the other modification I did to the subframe is I go to use all uh, M14 bolts in the subframe. So all the holes are drilled up to M14, 10.9 uh, uh, or it's just 8.8 .8 strength. That's the original 8.8. .8. I think the original one is, I think it's uh, M12 with its 8.8, .8, so I'm using M14. On the V12 I used 10.9 uh, stronger bolts, M12. But I'm going to step it a little bit up because this car will get between 700 and 800 newton meters uh, at the crank. That's my prediction what it will be. So this is a tie rod. I'm using these because I want to have, uh, I'll show you that full adjustment to a subframe because normally if you lower a car the wheels will go in upwards I don't want that also with the uh, hubs they are not completely the same for example the most uh, there's one that you need one connection that you need to modify that's the bottom one this one the bottom it needs to be moved around three centimeters backwards uh, if you want to do this modification, do the measurements also yourself. Uh, if you don't modify the other connections, I also did not that, do that, then you have to have a tie rod, otherwise it will not be completely the same. I don't measure them all, but the bottom one is the one you need to modify because it's just, uh, it's just off a lot. That's this point. That's uh, three centimeters different from the other ones. But I also did the other modification on the other car. The alignment is pretty good. The biggest thing what most people will modify is the top arm. And they want to have it longer because the wheel will then be straight and not inwards. That's the most of uh, the modification. So this is a tie rod. It's just a full steel tie rod. Uh, M14, left thread, right thread. And it's just... Uh, there will be a rubber over it. I will put a link below the video where I ordered these parts. It's the same as from the last one. That's not a sponsored one. Uh, I could do that, but I didn't. Yeah, I just forgot. Maybe I cut. Maybe I had some discount or something, but I didn't do it. Uh, there's a rubber over it. They also sell it on the website. It's McKill Motorsports. It's in the UK. Very good company. They are not very cheap, but they are also not very expensive for what you get. Uh, this rubber will be, be over here and then uh, that's it they will be mounted uh, I got two 
alignment rings on each side. They will, will be like this. And then the bolt will go through. Uh, it's not a complete direct fit. I uh, needed to push the mountings a little bit outwards because I was two or three millimeters short of space. So I did that. Uh, so yes, I will go and have mount this stuff. I made a little bit of a frame underneath because if it's all ready I can have it stand here and then just put the car jack underneath and drive it underneath the car when I want to mount it. That's why it's on here now. So it stay, it will stay on here. So I'm going to start uh, mounting all the stuff. This is it. All the linkages are in. Uh, some of them are need to tighten. I did not do that because otherwise you put pressure on the end of the angle. The they can have the rods can have they can have. So I have to check all the tightness of the bolts. M14 8.8 bolts. That's 138 newton meters or 138.3 or something. Uh, the other ones, only M12s are in here. That's, I thought, 88 Newton meters. Already tightened. So, everything is in. It's a pretty shitty job to get them in, but they look all very good. I have to get all the grease off, and now you can see it's very easy to, to adjust them. It needs to be done in a car, of course. Everything is just, it's very easy. I think it's just, much nicer to have it like this. Very, very cool. I think. Um, so yes, the holes in the hubs were also drilled up to M14. Also these holes. Um, yeah, everything is in. So it looks all good. So, subframe rebuild completely done. Rear end. If you've got any questions about this subject, uh, leave some comments below the video. I will try to answer them. Uh, so, S210 rear hubs, E55 AMG brakes. Uh, the S210 has bigger diameter uh, wheel bearings and hubs. That's why I take these ones. Um, you need to modify, of course, one uh, part on the bottom side of the subframe, three centimeters backwards, if you got those hubs. Uh, next to the original one you will see what you need to change and do your own measurements of course don't trust me on all the measurements I just did it this way it's the same way I did on the on a 90 uh, all the rod ends uh, I got from Mikhail, Mikhail Motorsports it's in the UK I put a link below the video uh, you can have a look on that site um, it's it's pretty tight to get these bushings in uh, I had them made a bolt it's an M Fitting bolt cut off, it's just a piece I put in there and then get them in between. So I damaged one before I use this one. One rubber is damaged, so I need to order a new one for that. It's not that expensive. But if now it's mounted, it's very, it's just, I'm very pleased with this setup. So uh, yeah, I really like it. It's very easy to control. You can just now, of course, the wheels are not on there, but if you see if you get the wheels are off, it's very easy. 
to control all these arms. Of course it needs to be uh, aligned when it's underneath the car, so I'll put it in a base setter, but I know it's uh, pretty close. So the next thing is uh, differential. Um, it's a little bit greasy on the side, so I'm going to change the, the, the seals. I'm going to show you how to do that. Uh, De-rust it, give it a new paint layer, so that's the next, next video. So if you're new to the channel, uh, have a look in the right corner. If you just want to click on you click on my main page, you can see the complete playlist of this build. Also the 190 for 12 if you're not familiar with that one. And also have a look on my website, jamespeedship.com, it's over here. So if there are any questions, don't hesitate to ask, try to answer them. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video. Bye bye.